Hi, everyone. I'm just going to take a few minutes to show you a little bit about TVO Mathify, uh, a little bit about how to get your students registered, and a little bit about why you might want to register yourself for an account and how you might use this with your class. So Mathify from TVO is the upgrade and replacement to the TVO Homework Help program that a lot of people might be familiar with if you've taught intermediate for a few years. It provides online tutoring for students uh, Sunday through Thursday from 5.30 to 930 provides math tutoring from Ontario certified teachers for students who might need it. Now, if I'm going to have my students use this resource, um, I need to recognize something very important and a very important change is that the Mathify site is now something we can use all the time. Uh, it's a more, it's an interactive site, a more interactive site that allows during the tutoring time in the evenings, it allows for two-way audio if students would like. So basically, you're chatting back and forth with a tutor, which is a really, a really cool upgrade. Um, and the whiteboard is a shareable whiteboard. And I'm going to show you what that means in just a few moment, moments. It's a shareable whiteboard that integrates with learning management systems like Google Classroom. So the first thing we need to do, though, of course, get our students registered. So we go to tvomathify.com up there and we click on register and we click on student of course as an educator i'm hoping you'll just click on educator and follow the prompts relatively straightforward now students come up with a unique username they do not include their name unique username okay something unique to them email address they're using their board email address which is student number at educ.dpcdsb.org Okay, student number at educ.dpcdsb.org. You're probably familiar with it, but if you're not, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Now for the password, they're going to come up with a password, of course, that uh, that they will remember. OEN number. Let's make sure we already have this number ready for our students because logistically it's a big step to take if you don't have the numbers ready and you have to go scrambling to find a list that has these numbers or you have to tell students to pull out a, a a document or whatever it's not going to work you're going to want to have this number ready for students provide it for them and you're going to make them select their grade accurately because it won't match with their oen if they're inaccurate they have to agree to the terms they do not have to subscribe to the newsletter and then they'll click submit when they click submit they'll get a chance to build their profile uh, by creating an avatar and by exploring the site now here's the thing they will get a verification in their board email. So they have to go to their DP Cloud email. If they're on a Chromebook, you can just click on the icon that looks kind of like a globe or a crystal ball or whatever you want to call that, and that will take them to their DP Cloud. Um, they might have to set up, if you've never had them use it, they might have to set up the time zone they're in. But regardless, after they've set up the account by, by clicking the time zone, you click on the Outlook icon. And from there, students should be able to verify their account. You may need to check in their other inbox. But what, what it's going to look like once students are signed into their accounts is a little bit similar to my tutor account here. So I'm just signing into my tutor account because there's a lot of similarities between this and the student account and even more similarities between this and the account that you'll set up as an educator. Now, you can take the guided tour, but more often students are going to just want to explore. So students are going to select their avatar and when they do that, they're going to be able to click on it and it opens up all of these really cool options. My stuff is a place where all student work ends up being saved. Saved chats from tutoring sessions will be here. And saved whiteboards that they've either created on their own or that are done in conjunction with you because you as a teacher can share whiteboards with your students. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So you have a, the option of creating a whiteboard here. And within the whiteboard, you're going to create a question for my students to work on or a problem for my students to solve. You can create that with shapes and lines that are available to you. You can create that with text. You can create that with using a pencil and actually writing things, changing the colors, of course. 
You can put a grid up on the board or use any of the different variations of lines. You can upload an image. And this could be directly from, this can be directly from um, some PDFs that you have. This can be directly from any resources that you have. In this case, we're just, you know, we're just diving into my, um, my Google Drive. But any number of images, whatever you've been able to save into your Google Drive or into any other, you know, account that's attached to the computer, to the device that you're using, you can insert that picture. So in this case, I'm just going to put in a protractor just to do something. I'm going to move that protractor away from the text. From here, you've created a problem for your students to solve. You've creatively thrown something up there. You want each of them to have their own copy of this to work with on their own whiteboard where they can demonstrate their thinking, where they can add different slides, different boards. As you can see, I'm doing up top. You can add up to five new boards, okay? You are going to click Save. You're going to give it a name. That item lands as an educator. It lands in your My Stuff area. It will land in the same place as it'll also land in the My Stuff for your students once you share it with your students. So here we have a saved whiteboard that we click into. As you can see, the URL is unique right there up top. I'm going to go and I'm going to control C or I can just right click and I'm going to copy that URL. Now, just to show you how it works, I'm actually going to log out my account. Now I have that URL copy, copied onto my clipboard and I put it into an assignment that I create for my grade eight students, let's say, or my grade seven students or whoever. Now, it says, please work on this question in your Mathify account, then share your completed whiteboard with me. My link is going to be, I'm just going to paste. So I can do control V or right click paste. And I'm going to add that link. I'm going to save the post. This is now my assignment for these students, okay? Now, as a student, when I'm picking up the assignment, as a student, when I pick up the assignment and I get the link, <clears throat> pardon me, I will be asked to log in to my Mathify account. So the student logs in. It's the same process as me logging in here. Student logs into his or her Mathify account. They get taken directly to my stuff with the exact whiteboard that you have created for them. That means they each have an, have, uh, an identical copy for now of the question that you set up for them. And it's in their my stuff. All of them have this. They click it, they click to load onto their own whiteboard, click load onto whiteboard. And now they have your question waiting for them to work on. And they might put their work and they might go to a new slide and they might keep working. And I know the writing is terrible. Okay, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, they keep on working. When they're done, they can click save. They have to give it a title and that's going to be, you know, unique to how you work it with your students. Logistically, this is a case by case situation, how you're going to have students copy things or how you're going to have students create names for things. These are logistical things you're going to deal with as a teacher within your own classrooms, but they save that whiteboard that they've worked on that started that started from your question and they can then copy it just like I did. They can copy it and they can, as part of your assignment, whether it's adding it to a document or whether it's just putting it in a comment field, but they can share that link with you. Hopefully that made sense. Please let me know how I can help you in person and we can get Mathify rolling with your class and your intermediate students. Thanks again.